Kevin Harvick's disqualification once again highlights just how far Stuart Haas racing has fallen. And let's break down everything we know about the Matt Crafton, Nick Sanchez brawl. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. I hope your week is off to a great start. Happy Monday. We've got lots to catch up on from this eventful weekend at Talladega. But first, this episode is sponsored by my friends at Pristine Auction. PristineAuction.com is the premier destination for sports memorabilia and collectibles auctions. At PristineAuction.com, you can bid on a wide range of items starting at just $1, including thousands of signed pieces from your favorite athletes. Every item sold at Pristine Auction comes with a certificate of authenticity from the industry's most reputable authenticators. Whether you're a NASCAR fan or just a collector of all things sports related, Pristine Auction is your go-to source for quality memorabilia. And as a special offer for fans of this show, use registration code GROOVE to get $10 off your first winning purchase. Click the top link down in the description below to register. Again, use that code GROOVE to get $10 off your first item one. Thank you to pristineauction.com for sponsoring the show. Lots of things happened this weekend that I didn't get the chance to cover last night on my post-race Talladega video, which be sure to go check that out in case you missed it. I'll put it up here somewhere. Let's go ahead and start with some news that broke late last night just after I'd uploaded my episode. Uh, Kevin Harvick, who came up 0.012 seconds short of getting his first win of the season, potentially the final win of his Cup Series career, finished second still has been disqualified. Officials found that he had unsecured windshield fasteners, which I believe refers to these little bolts, these little pieces here on the side. The team violated section 14.5.6.2.f of the uh, NASCAR rulebook, which specifically refers to the windshield. Harvick loses all stage points earned and will be credited with a 38th place finish. I don't relish in bringing you Kevin Harvick fans this bad news. Rodney Childers, Kevin Harvick's crew chief, tweeted last night, there have been times I've got caught doing something I shouldn't have. Today, got DQ'd for the car buffering in the draft all day and some windshield bolts vibrating out. My guys had silicon on the threads and gobbed on the tip. Still came out. Not sure what else we could do. I'll be honest, I don't know what half of those words mean, at least not in that context. I've never had to uh, attach or fasten a heavy windshield to a race car. (laughs) It may be a really small thing, but uh, I mean, the rules in this case are kind of black and white. I will give Rodney Childers and Stuart Haas Racing this benefit of the doubt. NASCAR only takes a hard look usually at the top two finishers. Obviously, then they take some cars to the R&D center, but at the track, they look closely at first and second there's a possibility that, you know, 4th, 12th, 18th place also had these windshield fasteners loose, but, you know, they weren't inspected, so they didn't get caught. That is certainly possible. So I feel bad that such a small, I don't even know if mistake is the right word, but a small error would lead to a disqualification. But, I mean, rules are the rules. All that being said, this is just the latest example It sure feels like Stuart Haas Racing is collapsing in on itself like a dying star. Stuart Haas Racing has been blasted by at least four massive penalties in the past calendar year. Go back to this same race weekend one year ago. Kevin Harvick was docked 100 driver owner points and the team was fined $100,000 for supposedly modifying a single source part. A week later, Cole Custer's team was fined $200,000 for trying to manipulate the finish of the Roval race to get Chase Briscoe some extra spots. In May of this year, Chase Briscoe's team was hit with the largest penalty in, I don't know, recent NASCAR history, a $250,000 fine, 120 points. All this for counterfeiting a part of the next-gen underwing. And they did not appeal. They admitted they made a mistake. They said it was a piece that was never supposed to go on the car in the first place. Somehow got mixed up and attached anyways. And then you have this. A small, trivial thing, but it shows perhaps a lack of attention to detail. Maybe another quality control issue, you could argue. Four massive penalties in less than a year. I'm not on the inside, but from the outside... 
it looks like Stuart Haas Racing is a disheveled race team with no active leadership. They're about to lose their driver leader, Kevin Harvick. He's going to retire. Eric Amarola continues to keep us all in suspense. He reiterated this week and that he still isn't close to making a decision on next season. It's October, for goodness sake. SHR has new drivers coming in seemingly every year, from Cole Custer to Chase Briscoe to Ryan Priest to Josh Berry, now potentially Cole Custer again next year. They swapped crew chiefs between a couple of their teams in the middle of this season. Team co-owner Tony Stewart is out drag racing almost every weekend, it seems. I'm not exaggerating when I say that I've seen Michael Jordan, the Michael Jordan at the racetrack more the past few weeks than I've seen Tony Stewart. Harvick and Rodney Childers were five laps off the pace at Bristol a few weeks ago in, a, in an elimination race. These four massive penalties in the last year, I... The Talladega Nights crossover was really cool. I, I'm sorry, I was getting really negative there. I wanted to say something positive about Stuart Haas Racing. That was an awesome promotion this week. The speed from Stuart Haas Racing has maybe been a little better the past month or two, maybe just a bit. That's a good sign, but this team continues to have problems. It's demoralizing to talk about this team every week. I can't imagine how frustrating it must be to be a fan or to be someone who's working for the team, just competing, trying to do their best. I'm rooting for Stuart Haas Racing, but man, I don't know if it's just a lack of attention to detail. Chase Briscoe on our show last week suggested that early on this year, Stuart Haas was pointing the finger saying, hey, we're not struggling. It's a Ford issue. They overlooked their own shortcomings for perhaps too long. Is there a pride issue there? I don't know what's going on. I'm rooting for Stuart Haas Racing to figure it out, but man. Right now, this ship just keeps crashing into icebergs left and right. I'm hoping they're able to patch things up in time for next year. They'll have some new drivers, some new faces. I hope they hit the ground running come February. One of the greatest finishes in recent NASCAR history, somewhat tainted now by Kevin Harvick's ultimate disqualification. Um, but let's move on and talk about something that happened Saturday afternoon after the Truck Series race. Many of y'all have probably already seen the video from frontstretch.com that showed a dog pile in the Talladega garage. You see a bloody Nick Sanchez pulled from the pile shouting at someone in the distance, I'll effing kill you at Homestead. You messed with the wrong guy. I will freaking kill you. A brutal video, uh, not for those faint of heart. So, so what led to this? What happened? What do we know? Everything seemed to begin on track Saturday afternoon, this big crash that sparked when Nick Sanchez and Matt Crafton came together in the trioval. Looking at the incident, you know, Crafton moves up, but he's just staying in line. It looks like Nick Sanchez and those behind him are kind of poking their nose somewhere it doesn't belong. Hard to see if Crafton comes down slightly or if Sanchez just kind of moves up just ever so slight. They kind of come together, Sanchez being aggressive, Crafton not expecting it that sets off the crash. After the crash, Matt Crafton was obviously very angry. He parked his wrecked race truck in Nick Sanchez's pit stall, sort of stared down his crew chief and team. Crafton went to the infield care center. The race concludes. Sanchez still involved. Once he gets the checkered flag, he's walking back to his hauler, supposedly, post-race when Matt Crafton, in street clothes at this point, confronted him. And that's where the fight began. It's worth mentioning that NASCAR has said that they are investigating this incident. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a moment. Tuesday, Wednesday, typically when penalties are announced, but we'll talk more about that in a moment. So what led to the fight? That video that everyone's seen from Front Stretch picks up about halfway through towards the end. We still don't know exactly what sparked the physical confrontation, and we have a variety of perspectives and stories. We have two sides, basically, to this and they don't really line up with one another. Let's start with what Nick Sanchez said happened. He told reporters afterwards, quote, I was walking back to the hauler, got tapped on the back, punched in the face. It was a cheap shot. He said he may have like a slight break on or around his nose. Um, his PR rep tried to pull him away whenever someone asked if uh, what's going to happen at Homestead. They did not want Nick Sanchez <laughs> answering that question. But Nick Sanchez alleges that Matt Crafton just sucker punched him out of nowhere. Sanchez never had a chance to see it coming, defend himself. He was popped in the face before he even knew what happened. That's a pretty harsh, serious allegation. That does not make Matt Crafton look good at all. Matt Crafton gave his side of the story on Twitter 
Saturday evening, and his perspective was completely different than Nick Sanchez. Here's some of what Matt Crafton tweeted. Here is what wasn't caught on video. First, let's address the sucker punch. Before the camera started rolling, I approached Nick and said, hey. When he turned around, I said, what the, mm, to which he looked right at me and threatened me. That's when it all went to hell. I had his attention, words were exchanged, all before anything physical took place, so I did not sucker punch the guy. There may not be video, but there were plenty of eyewitnesses. I have still not found any reliable eyewitness testimony to, to back up, honestly, either Nick Sanchez or Matt Crafton's account. Corey Roper, uh, in the video, you could see him. He's a truck series driver. He was the one pulling Nick Sanchez out of the pile, pulling him out of the, out of the scuffle. Uh, he, even he said he didn't see exactly what started it. Crafton continues, though, what people don't take into account is that he all but sucker punched me at 200 miles per hour. The way he pushed my truck gave me no ability to get out of the situation, and he was told multiple times during that race the way he was pushing people was going to cause a wreck and going to get people hurt. There is a consistent pattern of certain drivers having a lack of respect on the track, and it was time for someone to say something. <laughs> I mean, that just looked like a typical super speedway wreck to me. I, I mean, I would put more of the blame on Sanchez, sure. Again, it's hard to tell. Does Crafton come down slightly? Does Sanchez come up? I can't really tell, but you can see Crafton is staying in line with the trucks in front of him. Sanchez is the one who seems to be kind of poking his nose into a, a tight hole that may or may not actually exist. I, I think Sanchez certainly forced the issue. That wreck does not happen if Sanchez just kind of stays behind Crafton the way he probably should have been. But we see that kind of wreck at Daytona and Talladega all the time. I don't know that it justified the kind of reaction it got from Matt Crafton. I get Crafton being frustrated. He's a truck series champion, a veteran of the sport. You know, 10, 15 years ago, the guy in Nick Sanchez's position probably doesn't make that move, doesn't try to force the issue. They probably lift and give Crafton room to get back in line. But this is 2023. That's not how NASCAR races are run anymore. Certainly not Craftsman Truck Series races. It's dog eat dog. It's go, go, go all the time. I understand an older driver like Matt Crafton, that's still a bit of a culture shock. I don't believe that incident justified you know, the parking in the pit stall, the confronting the guy and allegedly sucker punching him. Now, if his account that they were arguing and yelling first and then punches were thrown is correct, that's a little different still. I'm not sure that wreck justified such a strong reaction from Matt Crafton. Anyway, I'm sorry. Back to the last couple tweets from Crafton. Am I proud that it got physical? No. But last time I checked, everyone on that track is a grown adult. If a man looks at me and threatens me, I'm going to react, especially when tempers are already flared from being wrecked on the track. I apologize to my team, my sponsors and partners, my family, and the NASCAR community for the negativity and for taking attention away from a good day of racing at Talladega. Yeah, on that point, I did see a lot of folks on social media jumping on Matt Crafton, you know, digitally speaking, for being, what, d twice the age of Nick Sanchez? I think Crafton is 47. Nick Sanchez is only 22 years old. Like, sure, that certainly looks bad that a 47-year-old man would, you know, allegedly sucker punch a 22-year-old, a, a college kid, basically. But, you know, obviously a sucker punch, if that's in fact what happened, is wrong. But just the idea of a 47-year-old and a 22-year-old adult, a physically fit adult, just the idea of the two of them fighting, that doesn't bother me at all. The age difference really doesn't bug me. Nick Sanchez is an adult. He's 22 years old. He can handle itself. Again, if it was a sucker punch, that's a really bad look. But if it was just, you know, face-to-face, -face, you know, confrontation, a fight, the age doesn't bug me. Maybe that's just me. As far as I can find, there is still no neutral account of what started the incident um, I did see Nick Sanchez's mom <laughs> chimed in on, I think, Facebook. I think Joseph Srigley, a reporter, shared this on social media. And I mean, she basically backed up her own son's account, said, yeah, he got sucker punched. No warning, no chance to defend himself. But, you know, no disrespect to Miss Sanchez. I can't say she's a neutral observer in this case. So I don't know. Crafton says that there were uh, witnesses present. I'm sure NASCAR will talk to as many of them that they can find. We'll see whose stories line up, what exactly happened. Um, if Nick Sanchez's story is true, that without warning, Crafton tapped him on the shoulder, turned and punched him right in the face, potentially broke his nose, I do think NASCAR will issue some sort of fine, and they probably should. I'm not sure about a points penalty. I hate to punish the team for something dumb the driver did way after the race off track, but a fine for sucker punching someone 
is absolutely fair in my eyes. Now, if the two did get into an argument first face to face, they were yelling, pointing, and then punches were thrown, that's different. And historically, NASCAR has not penalized that. Like in recent memory, I can think of Austin Hill when he blasted Myatt Snyder on pit road last season, sent Snyder to the ground, I believe. NASCAR did not issue any fine, any sort of penalty to Austin Hill. From what I understand, both he and Snyder have been talking face to face. Austin Hill had even warned him a couple of times to back off. Punches were thrown, no penalty. Earlier this year, with Noah Gregson and Ross Chastain, you know, they were face to face. In fact, hands had even been put on each other before any punches were thrown. Yeah, I didn't like that Gregson didn't get a chance to, you know, retaliate after Chastain threw the first punch. Security stepped in quick, but you know, at the end of the day, that didn't deserve a penalty either. I don't even think Kyle Busch got a penalty when he walked up and punched Logano in the face in 2017 at, at Las Vegas, I think. And there, you know, that was borderline because they weren't really talking beforehand, but Logano did see him coming because Bush just sort of charged through the crowd, walked right up face to face Logano and punched him. I, I don't think he got a penalty for that. That one was maybe borderline. <laughs> According to Seth Eggert, I believe, on social media, the last time NASCAR penalized a driver for a physical fight, I believe, was uh, Spencer Gallagher versus John West Townley in the truck series. I think that was 2016, right? The the spectacle that they put on, on track. I believe that was the last time someone in NASCAR got penalized for a physical altercation. So if what Nick Sanchez says is true, I think Crafton should get at least a fine. You can't just blindside somebody, punch them in the face and break their nose. That We do need to draw a line somewhere. But if they were face-to-face -face yelling, if there was a threat thrown uh, by Nick Sanchez, Matt Crafton's way, then this is just like any other NASCAR fight, and unfortunately, Nick Sanchez got the losing end of it. But we don't know all the facts. We still don't know exactly what started it, who started it. But let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Hopefully tomorrow, Wednesday, we'll find out the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. But until then, we can just gawk at the aftermath, the brutal, ugly aftermath. Um, a lot of folks have also taken exception to Nick Sanchez yelling, I'll kill you. Yes, that's dark. That's not... A good thing to yell um, no doubt certainly not great that was caught on camera um but he to the moment if he did in fact just get jumped effectively i'm gonna cut him some slack i don't know the, the guy actually throwing a punch that broke his nose bugs me more than some insults some words thrown his way you know obviously keep a close eye on the two at homestead though no doubt keep a close eye on that maybe even maybe even bring, bring back probation has nascar put anyone on probation the past few years that used to be a common thing is probation still a thing Put him on probation, perhaps, for the, the remainder of this season. No funny business. No more funny business between the two. Anyway, again, leave a comment down below. That's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you want to stay in the loop on all the latest NASCAR news, rumors, race recaps, and more. And as always, huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for going the extra mile. I truly appreciate what you guys do for the channel. I will see you again later this week. Have a wonderful rest of your Monday, folks. Take care.